Hello again. So now we're going to talk a little bit about mechanisms of speciation. That is, how does an ancestral population split into two separate populations, and then how do those two separate populations become species? Okay. Remember when we talked about speciation, that speciation results from genetic isolation and also genetic divergence. Okay. Remember, these are two important components of speciation. The first of which, genetic isolation, we're going to focus on today. Okay. There are lots of mechanisms for genetic isolation. Um, in genetic isolation happens pretty routinely when populations become physically separated. Okay, so we're going to talk first of all about how is it do populations of organisms become physically separated and then therefore genetically isolated. Remember, you should understand how it is that these genetically isolated populations can then diverge. Remember, there are a couple of different mechanisms um, by which this can happen. Remember, I'll just give you two, genetic drift, natural selection. So think about, you know, the first step is genetic isolation. How, do, how does a population of organisms become separated from one another? And we're going to talk about physical separation first. But then I want you to remember and get think back, well, what is it that then causes divergence? Okay. But we're going to talk about physical separation first. Physical isolation is, is um, when two, a population of organisms become physically separated from one another. And this is called the allopatric model of speciation. That is, uh, a population becomes physically separated from one another. Those two populations genetic, are genetic, become genetically isolated. And then, therefore, those two populations diverge and result in speciation. This is allopatric, the allopatric model of speciation. There are two ways in which um, physical separation can happen um, in a population of organisms. The first way is pretty simple. Um, it's dispersal and colonization of a new habitat. So if you look at this, this um, table over here to the right, or I should say this figure over here to the right from your textbook, it shows a group of organisms dispersing themselves into a new habitat and then genetic drift and selection acting on that new population, the two populations then become isolated. That is, they become genetically different from one another. This should remind you of something. Okay, so think about it um, as we go forward. But this should remind you of um, one of the processes that actually causes genetic drift. Okay, remember there was the founder effect and bottleneck effect? So you should understand those two um, pieces of this puzzle. Okay. A great, there are multiple, multiple examples of um, dispersal and coloni colonization as a mode of allopatric speciation. And a one of the best examples of this um, are Drosophilus flies and Drosophila species in the Hawaiian Islands. Now those of you who are taking genetics um, next year will become very, very intimately familiar with um, Drosophila melanogaster and that's this little fly down here um, pictured at the bottom of your screen. But Drosophila species are actually incredibly diverse. And in the Hawaiian Islands especially you get sort of these really interesting morphologically and genetically um, species of Drosophila. Okay, one example is Drosophila heteroneura, which you can see here in the middle, and here it's depicted as one of the more recent lineages of Drosophila in the Hawaiian Islands. And just a little bit about the Hawaiian Islands. In the Hawaiian Islands there is a um, a volcanic hotspot. And what happens is a volcanic hotspot um, produces an, uh, a terrestrial landscape, some sort of island, and then those islands migrate to the north and to the west after they've been formed. So in the Hawaiian Islands, as you go from the southeast to the northwest, the islands actually are older. Okay, so for example, Kauai here was probably 
is a very, very old island. And as you go to Oahu and then to Lanai and then to Maui and then to that big island, Hawaii, those islands become newer, the volcanic hot spot lying just down here to the southeast of, of the big island, Hawaii. So if you look at, um, at Drosophila species on these islands in, in, in Hawaii, what you notice is that older lineages of Drosophila here, represented by Drosophila hemispisa, um, are present on Oahu. What probably happened, since this is an older island, is that a population of hemispisa migrated or dispersed themselves onto Molokai. Those two populations, the one in Oahu and the one in Molokai, became physically separated from one another from this dispersal event. And then, because of natural selection and genetic drift, this population of organisms of Drosophila on Molokai became different species. The same thing then happened from Molokai to Maui, and then from Maui to Hawaii, and then even on the big island in Hawaii, there was a dispersal event that separated um, western populations of Drosophila from eastern populations of Drosophila, Drosophila, and these populations became genetically isolated. So Drosophila has dispersed itself from these older islands to the younger islands, and with each dispersal event, genetic isolation, and then natural selection and genetic drift acted on those populations to actually create these new species that now no longer interbreed, and they are really genetically isolated from one another. Excellent example of allopatric speciation by dispersal and colonization. Another way that allopatric speciation can happen is by a vicariant event, and that is literally a range split by some sort of physical barrier. Now you can sort of imagine this happening, you know, um, slowly or quickly, slowly with, um, say, uh, continental drift, or more rapidly, say, with a lava flow coming in between two populations of snails and cutting off those two populations of snails isolating them An and then example of if genetic drift and, and uh, natural selection after is these populations, in the those snapping populations becoming um, separate species. in um, in Central America. So what happened was was that um, at one point in time there was no isthmus of Panama here. In other words, organisms were able to pretty freely move from the Caribbean Sea to the Pacific Ocean. In other words, this was one migration pathway. Well, what happened about three million years ago is that the Isthmus of Panama arose, separating Caribbean populations of organisms from Pacific populations of organisms. And there was a woman, um, Dr. Nancy Knowlton, from the Smithsonian Tropical Research Institute, who is studying the impacts of the Isthmus of Panama arising three million years ago on populations of organisms in the Caribbean Sea and the Pacific Ocean. And what she studied in particular is um, this, uh, these two populations of snapping shrimp. So there's a Pacific Ocean population of snapping shrimp and a Caribbean Ocean population of snapping shrimp. Morphologically, they're extremely similar to one another. And, and even phylogenetically, they're similar to one another, but the first step of genetic isolation via, vi via vicariants has actually produced genetic isolation in these populations. So what the way that she determined this was that she took a population of Caribbean sea snapping shrimp and a population of Pacific o Ocean snapping shrimp and she put these guys into a big aquarium with one another to see how they would react. Are they still going to interbreed? In other words, are they still the same species? or have they actually started to become genetically isolated via vicariants? And what she found was that even though these things are very morphological simil morphologically similar to one another, when she put them in a tank together, they fought with one another. They, the males and females would not interbreed. So the first step of reproductive isolation has happened in this population. And the next steps of 
increased genetic and uh, divergence via natural selection is probably going to act on these populations eventually, creating morphological differences um, between these guys and more phylogenetic differences between these guys. So it's a, an excellent example of genetic isolation via vicariance. In the next video, what I'm going to talk to you about is speciation that happens without physical isolation, and that's called sympatric speciation. Until then.